having a look at the graph capabilities of color space specifically looking at the 3d volumetric graphs as they really are the unique um, uh, benefit of using color space um, but we'll be looking at all of the different uh, 1d and 2d graphs as well the graphs themselves are held within the profiling window where you have access to the uh, x y u v the 3d volumetric graphs uh, eotf differential eotf separation balance etc etc at the moment we're not seeing anything in the way of data because there is no profile data um, as yet recorded into the, this window uh, we are targeting rec 709 at the minute the um, target gamut is um, uh, linked to the EOTF. It will be separated, isn't yet. Obviously, you've then got the subspace uh, uh, capabilities as well. You can see that as well, we are targeting um, the standard 100 nits for SDR um, uh, color spaces, as well as the minimum of uh, zero, which gives us an infinite uh, 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 contrast ratio. Um, if we close this and actually look at a profile we'll get a little bit more uh, data to play with and we've got in our uh, library our um, existing profiles and we'll pick on um, yeah, Convision, there we go, it's got a profile with drift data so we can have a look at everything and if we open that up at the moment we are looking at a specific set of data so that means that I've left in my graph options um, in this case you can see that I'm just looking at the uh, orange um, uh, data points so we turn those off we're now looking at everything in the graph relative to rec 709 and relative to a maximum 100 and a minimum 100 nits so we can see that the uh, orange points are between a delta e of uh, 1 and 2.3 and red is 2.3 and above and green is below 1. Now at the moment um, as I say, we're looking at the default min and max. If we use the lap arrow, it will now uh, swap the uh, values over so that we're now looking at the actual measured min and max. It gives us a bit more of a feel for what the display is actually capable of. You can see now we've got some green points pop in. But we are still looking at it relative to Rec 709, which obviously we will want to do once we've calibrated it. But this is an uncalibrated display, which we're just using for an example. And you can see that the outer light grey line is the actual display's gamut, and the white line is the target gamut. Uh, if we go in and turn off others, so we're just looking at the grayscale primary and secondary, then you can see now the... Uh, measured gamut versus the target gamut. We can even turn on our tangents and see where the uh, points are relative to where they should be, the measured points that is. Um, so look at the grayscale for example, you can see the, uh, the target is at the end of the, the uh, tangent line and the actual measured points are obviously all shown uh, at the end of that line. Okay, let's put the others back on. Now, as I say, while that's useful, in this instance, what we'd like to do is actually assess the display um, relative to itself so we can get a feel for what it really is capable of doing. I mean, obviously, at the moment, we can see that it, it's never going to make blue because it doesn't have a blue primary that is in alignment with the uh, blue of Rec. 709, uh, and that is defined uh, slightly more visibly. In, oops, wrong one, in the RGB cube. You can see that here is our target blue. You can see that our actual blue is a long way off, uh, increasing from black. Um, and okay, it's, ex it's uh, exaggerated because we're looking at it in, uh, in linear light space rather than the logarithmic uh, light that our uh, eyes actually work to. So it does actually ex uh, um, enhance the, uh, the error, as it were, but uh, very helpful nonetheless. Okay. Looking at it relative to what it can do, if we go back into our library, back into our profile, we'll modify Convision Raw. We will call it XTR. We will extract the space, and that will now be in our. There it is. So we can now use that as a target color space. So if we go into 
settings and we can now select from our com spaces there we go and we're now comparing the the actual raw profile of the display um, with its own uh, maximum gamut and an average uh, gamma uh, at the moment again it's dropped back to targeting um, the default 100 nits and zero nits uh, min and max um, for uh, an SDR color space but we will just use the up arrow to replace that with the measured data and we now start to get a better feel for what the display can actually do again using for example here the uh, RGB cube let's look at the in uh, the XY and you can see now where there is more of a volumetric error within the display um, if you can see that little cross in there as well let's um, zoom into that that cross is the selected point in the profile so it enables us to select a point in this case it's one of the grayscales and actually zoom into that so if we say select a different one so let's select a, just something on the edge so you can see it but a green for example pops up all the data there um, we can actually look at uh, either the selected point and the area and or the area around it or just the point all the displayed points in the graph as defined by the um, boxes here selection boxes or we can override those and say show everything so we can see all of the points that exist in the graph whatever they may be let's just tick those back on we'll close that but if i go back to the 3d one now you can see that the point has moved there to on the edge of the uh, 3d graph as we selected okay looking at the graphs in the window here these are all obviously uh, you know resizable um, and the, the same within the actual volume of the graph itself as well uh, let's put that back to its uh, small size because one of the useful things with um, color space is that we can now pop out alternate graphs so if i control click on the cie it will pop out a selection of graphs let's just move that out the way um, that i've used previously so here we've got you know a, a zoom in on the red green blue and the gray scale um, we can have a gamma graph, a um, differential version of the gamma, and we'll call up the RGB balance. And again, all these graphs are independent, but showing obviously the same uh, data at the profile we're working on. And if we were doing live measurements, these would all update with each measurement um, uh, so that you can see exactly what's going on when you're doing a manual calibration, or as in this case, when we're doing a uh, an assessment of an existing profile as i said all of the uh, points are color coded um, so if we look at for oh, actually let's do it the other way around look at green you can see that these are all the points in the profile that have um, a delta of less than one so you get a feel for where the the accuracy in the in the uh, profile is and then we can say, okay, look at the uh, ones that are between 1 and 2.3, and then look at everything that is uh, above 2.3. So each of the graphs gives you a feel for where the display has a greater level of accuracy um, versus a greater level of error. You can add to that with the tangent lines, which show you where the point actually is and the end of the tangent line is where it should be so it gives you a very visual representation of uh, an error in any given area we can invert that as well and say targets only so this time it's showing you the uh, actual point uh, uh, of where the uh, measurement should be and obviously now at this end is where it actually is but the the point also gives you the color uh, um, so you can see that most of these errors are in the dark points because they have basically no uh, real color to them until we get into the grayscale. Okay, um, each of these graphs uh, remembers not just the position but the, the, the uh, uh, zoom that you may have applied to it. So if we, for example, go into the EOTF and say zoom into that. If I close that graph and then do a control click 
uh, back on it, it will pop back uh, in the last position and size that we set it to. Double click, right click, resets it. Um, we've also got the ability to use the manual measure um, window to see additional data, both with the, uh, uh, the widgets for um, the, the zoom of the error uh, and the bar widget. And any point that we select will be represented here. So the minute we've got the three boxes ticked, so although this is showing green, the colour here is a grayscale because they are locked. So it's showing me the nearest uh, uh, grayscale colour to uh, uh, the value selected. But if I now just move the sliders so it defaults back to grayscale, you'll see that when we hit a point that we actually have, these graphs will pick up that data. There you go. So you can see information on that given point, and the point itself is highlighted in the graphs as well. So over here in the, uh, um, the zoomed uh, grayscale, obviously in the CIE, the same within the, um, the 3D graphs that that cross we were talking about will show you the actual point we're looking at again based on what we've got selected here so let's go back to our standard um, and then if we unselect the locks then as we move through any colors if we hit a color that we actually have again in the graph then it all adds uh, the, the data into the display Right, I think that pretty much covers you know uh, an example of of what we've got with the graphs within um, uh, color space. Now, obviously, you can make these any size you want uh, at any time to be able to really access uh, the information contained within them. Uh, a double click defaults them back to their uh, standard uh, relative size within the window. We will be making some changes so that we won't have to have the uh, the bar along the top. Um, and they will be made to follow a little bit more of a, um, a, a, a fixed grid on the screen just to assist in being able to position and lay them out um, so that you can build up different workflows and those workflows will be accessible from within um, the, uh, the main color space uh, um, window the profiling window. We haven't yet got that uh, implemented, but it will be there. Um, um, to get a feel of the way the graph, the graphs will work, it's actually going to be based on the patch window. So you can see the way that this actually locks to different points and has no borders uh, and no bar, and then the, the size and position uh, and close capabilities uh, pop up um, within the graph itself. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what the graphs are like at the moment. Um, obviously, as with everything that we do, this is a continual uh, work in progress and there will be a lot more changes coming as we progress further uh, with the capabilities of Colorspace.